you talked about family. You have five children yourself. Yes. I barely survived one. I mean, she's a doll now and I would take 10 of her, but she's 14. And so, <laughs> so say a little bit more about the balancing part of it, because I have no answers for that. <laughs> well, as you know, with a 14-year-old, teenagers are busy. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. All children keep a family busy. And I think that, you know, when you're passionate about your startup and you're passionate about your family, um, the best that you can do is get really good at saying no. Yeah. <laughs> saying no to the things that don't need your time, that yeah. maybe in the past when you had more time, you were able to say yes to everything. So I find it a little bit easier to say no when I really focus on what are the most important things that my children want me to participate in and be involved in? Instead of saying yes to everything, I try to really show up for the things that matter the most to them. And then I feel like that's where we connect. Even if I'm only on the sideline watching one of their games or sure. helping out in the classroom, if it's something that matters to them, that's where I choose to show up. And then I have to say no and I miss other things. Yeah. And what are their ages? I have a 19-year-old, an 18-year-old, a 16 year old, a 14 year old, and an 11 year old Aww, little girl. All... Four girls, one boy. Oh, wow. Where's the boy fall? Right in the middle. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, those are fun ages. So, you, so what about your family? So, I, if my, it's funny. My daughter just said that she read an article on how the youngest person in the family ends up being the most successful. <laughs> I'm the youngest in my family. I have three other I brothers. Am too. Yeah. <laughs> so, she's like, well, I'm an only child. So, it means me too. I'm like, okay, I guess so. Um, but what is your family like? And, and how did they embrace your entrepreneurship? And that's a, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, the, the church company that we had. All five of our children traveled with us around the country. Every time we would launch a new church, sure. they would stand at the back. I love and that. as people were coming out, they would teach people how to download an app. And they're which probably was amazing. better suited to do it than anybody anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. And if you think about it, um, you know, many of the parishioners who come to a church on a regular basis are 45 and above. And so, especially when you start to talk about 70 year olds or 80 year olds who are coming out of church and they have a smartphone, but they've never really downloaded or used an app, they loved it. And so my children would stand with them and they would teach them how to download the app. So when I got ready to start this company, we sat around the table and we had a long discussion about what would it look like if mom started another company. Yeah, yeah. And although they were not involved every single day with this, um, they are involved in, in different elements. Most importantly, they're pitching in more around the house, <laughs> um, which was something that was going to be needed, that if, if I was going to go down this path again, I needed to have all five of the children, plus my husband and I, actively involved in the day-to-day -day chores, and they've done a great job with that. I'm also really proud of my um, teenage daughters because they know shopping better than anyone, yeah, right, right. and they have jumped right into shopping and sharing on the app. Uh, we're looking to launch a college ambassador program, oh, cool. teaching college girls how to create an extra stream of income for themselves by doing what girls do anyways, shop and share things on social. And I think the sustainability piece will be big there, coming from academia. That's really important to... Absolutely. The I think folks. the 18, 19, 20 year olds are very concerned about uh, being socially conscious and many of our brands fit that mold. Yeah. And so Even that's willing to pay more. Absolutely. For that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think if you're going to get a product that, you know, is sustainable, a female founder, uh, people are willing to pay more when they know that they're getting great quality. Nice. And cash back. Yeah. Who doesn't love that? Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned that you've got a VC that you work with and you raised capital before. So this is an area of research actually that I take a look at and women only receive about two to 3% of the venture capital out there. So in the grand scheme of things, very small percentage. Chicago is actually better though. There's a large amount of women tech founders here in Chicago. I think, I actually think Chicago is the highest. Don't quote me on that. So what has your experience been like that being female and going after dollars? My experience has always been focused on building relationships and uh, the people that have invested in Mavely and my last company, I feel like I have been rooted in building a relationship with them first. Yeah. And they know who you are as a, yeah. Absolutely. No, I mean, having that established relationship as well as success with proven business metrics, as well as um, showing momentum. Yeah. So although the numbers may not grow immediately from day one, the continual momentum and the building of the business great communication with your VC, you know, indicating all of your numbers and, and being very transparent about that. Those are all things that have led me to have a very seamless and smooth experience with my VC. Yeah, that's um, good. 
And I think that you're right. Chicago has a great deal of women tech founders, as well as women who invest in other women. Yeah. And I think that um, that's something to really consider when you're looking at raising money to connect with other female founders and find out what worked for them and who were supporters. Yeah. I always like the story of Sarah Blakely and Spanx, where she would go around trying to get capital and they just didn't understand bras and, you know, shapewear. But now I'm sure they're kicking themselves that they didn't invest. So, I, you know, I hear, that, I hear that over and over again. And I think that the less we talk about it and the more we prove it wrong, yeah. the better. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So I read in one of your interviews that inspiring women, both personally and professionally, and obviously having a coaching background falls into that, was really important to you. Can you say more about that and why that's so important? I think, uh, you know, I was raised with a very... Uh, a very quiet and humble mother who... Are you from Chicago, born and raised in Chicago? Born and raised yeah. in Chicago. Um, my Why mother, don't you have my bad accent? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I've often or maybe we don't hear it on each other. <laughs> Correct. I, I don't say soda pop or anything yeah. in the South. Uh, my, uh, my mother was um, a very, very good listener. And I think that she did a great job of helping find inherently people's strengths. And I think she's done a really good job of training my sisters, my brothers and I on trying to do that with others. And so when I have my own five children, as well as women that I've worked with, I love to try to focus on what are, what's the, what is that individual strengths and how are they using those in the world? Because I think it's so easy for women typically to compare ourselves to other women. Yeah. And I think it's very easy for women to be especially hard on ourselves, Yeah. Uh, especially like you were talking about in raising money or running a business or starting a business, balancing business and family. And I like to try to turn that around and focus on where are your strengths and how are you living in those strengths? Because that's where you're going to ultimately be most abundant and most fruitful. Okay. I like that. So what role does your faith play? I mean, you, obviously your third endeavor, the one parish, big part of the church component. So what does that play in your life? I think it, if I go back to my dad, my dad, uh, our faith was paramount to our upbringing. Sure. My dad rooted us every single week, weekend in. We were the family that was doing the pancake breakfast and the yeah. spaghetti dinners and the ice cream social. And my Which dad still was, happened today, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and my, my dad parents. sat on every council and, you know, he had us involved in the minute the church was being built. He was actually, there's photos of my dad with the shovel actually digging the ground um, in the early 70s. And that became central to our family with something very basic as sitting around the dinner table for dinner every single night. Yeah. And some of those basic rituals that many of our families have lost sight of, we have tried to keep those central to our family. So, you know, saying our prayers at night before we go to bed with our children and eating dinner at the dinner table. And taking time at the dinner table to reflect upon what we're thankful for. Um, those elements of my faith have become kind of the cornerstone to all the ups and all the downs. Yeah. And the so one constant. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like I go back to that on a regular basis to keep myself rooted in, again, I've talked both about both my parents in, in some of my core values. Yeah. I love that. That's my favorite part of the day is when we have dinner together around 5.30, we all get together. And then if we go off and do our separate things after that, that's okay. But we've all come together at least for dinner every day. Yeah. Well, and don't get me wrong. I mean, with the seven of us, we're busy and yeah. we don't get to eat dinner as often as we would like. And sometimes it's not at the dinner table and it's at the island. And yeah. sometimes or you're FaceTiming. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it's in the car that we're eating dinner yeah. on the go. But that ritual of uh, try to be consistent with that, we all need it. Yeah. I mean, we all need to just put our phones away and have that dinner time. I mean, part of when we started Mavely was a mission statement we had of let's get more moms back to the dinner table because like we think that's where we all grow faster and closer together. 